started, I also, also like to know, you know, who is on the call. So we already got our chat roll call going. So that's great. Um, so let's go ahead and, and jump in. Um, if you didn't get a chance to introduce yourself, please go ahead um, and put your information in there as well. Um, but yeah, let's let's go ahead and get started. And hopefully a couple more folks can filter in while I'm doing this. Introduce, introduce yourself. Um, so, and uh, for folks, just so you know, if it's possible to put yourself on mute so that we can make sure that um, we can get a good audio recording, that would be really, really helpful. All right. Okay. So, like Sarah said, my name is Ashley Rochelle. Um, my pronouns are she, her, hers, and I'm presenting to you today from the native Chechen Yulan, um, which is specifically known as like the Bay Area, like Oakland, um, Alameda, the East Bay, really. And I've been, been in communications now for like the last 10 years from digital to PR. And like Sarah said, um, you know, I've done nonprofit, I've done tech, um, I've done some startups. So I have like a pretty broad experience when it comes to communications across industries as well. Um, and really a lot of my growth has happened over the last five or six years. Um, and a lot of that has um, been um, why I'm, I'm here today. So, and why I'm specifically here to talk about LinkedIn. So a quick overview of um, what my career has looked like for the last 10 years. So, you know, recognize some of the companies that are on here. Um, but LinkedIn has been an essential part of all of that growth for me. Um, so a little bit, you know, to give some context, you know, when I was uh, first an intern, I was getting ready to go to college um, and I had an internship. So here I was this high school senior um, and one of my colleagues said, hey, you should sign up for this. So I'm like, I didn't know any better. I wanted to learn as much as I could. I'm like, OK, I'll create a LinkedIn profile. Um, why not? You know, and little did I know how much this tool would end up serving me and in my career. And so funny enough, uh, after college, um, LinkedIn was where I had my first job. And that's where I really got to learn, you know, all of the insider tips and tricks and knowledge on how to make my profile stand out and how to use the tools to work for me. Um, so by the time that I left there, I felt pretty confident about uh, my ability to use LinkedIn. And so then from there, I was able to find, you know, work through consulting, but eventually where we become one of more um, one of my longest uh, jobs, which was as the communications manager for this nonprofit called Smash. Um, and so it was during that time that I, I also took a lot of the learnings from LinkedIn and started sharing them with my coworkers, with my friends, with my colleagues, because um, I could see that, you know, I had the set of knowledge that most folks, especially folks from my community, um, just weren't aware of, they weren't taught. Um, and so I wanted to make sure that I helped, you know, spread that knowledge. And so um, eventually, you know, I ended up at Daughters of Rosie, um, which I was only there for a little while because this all of this period happened during 2020 and we know what 2020 has been. Um, and so then again, I leveraged LinkedIn um, and doubled down on my job search. And really that's what I want to um, go over with you today is like some of the learnings that I've had, um, some of the ways that I use the tool if you're not familiar with it so that you can also leverage it for your job search if you're in that position right now. So the key takeaways that I want for everybody here today is to be able to one, optimize your profile. We'll talk a little bit about that. Um, if you were there for the last LinkedIn workshop that I did, we went like super in depth on how to optimize your profile, but I'll still give you some tips here um, and really learn how to leverage uh, LinkedIn's job search tools so that you can boost your job search. Because as we all know, searching for a job is basically a full-time job. So I wanna make sure that you're set up for success. So a little bit about what our roadmap looks like today. So we're gonna be covering three topics um, and you can apply all of these pointers. And if you apply these, um, I feel like you will have a much better experience with your job search and you will also yield a lot more from that experience as well. So if anybody's done a design sprint before, 
um, this is what I've kind of modeled this roadmap because, um, you know, there's a lot of digital content nowadays um, and I don't want to just be lecturing at you for the entire time. I want to make it active, um, interactive, and I want to make sure that you feel like you're going to come away with something today. So I'm going to do roughly, you know, about five or so minutes of lecture per topic. And then in between, we're going to do an application of what we just talked about. Um, so then by the time we get to that to the breakout session that were mentioned earlier. Um, you'll be able to, you know, work with the content that you have already with the group that you're in um, and just, you know, be able to already um, apply what you've learned. Um, and so then by the time that we're done with this workshop, um, you can already, you know, hit the ground running with all of the notes that you've taken um, to really help with your job search. So, you know, get your phone out, get a pen and pencil, some scratch paper, um, feel free to just, you know, start jotting down um, any notes. Um, and for the sake of time, if you do have any questions, um, I'll ask you to save them, you know, for the, the breakout session. Um, but at the, at the same time, I know it's hard, to, like you don't wanna forget the question. So if you still wanna put it in the chat, I'm totally fine with that. Just know that I might not see it, but we'll definitely make sure that we get to those questions at the very end. All right, so a few disclaimers. So one, um, I always let folks know, LinkedIn, it's just another tool. It's just, you know, whether it's for professional uh, growth, career development, social media in some cases too. Um, it's just another tool. It's not a silver bullet. It's not the answer to everything. Um, and it may not work for everyone. However, it is a very powerful tool. And I wanna make sure that you are aware of how to use it um, because, you know, it's, it's around quite a bit, especially if you're in tech um, and it's kind of become more standardized, but perhaps you're not in tech. And so maybe in your industry, um, you know, it's actually not the best tool that you should be using for your job search. So I say that because I want you to take this knowledge um, and see how it works best for your search, or maybe it doesn't work best, but at least now you know how to apply it how to use it, and then also share the knowledge. Um, and then the other thing that I like to let folks know is that um, LinkedIn, you know, was not built was not built with um, with BIPOC in mind. You know, it wasn't built with Black, Indigenous, people of color in mind. LinkedIn, you know, is part of the tech industry, and it was built by two white guys. That being said, um, I I mentioned that because. Um, Given you know the year that we've had, there's a lot of newer conversations having um, being had on there um, about you know bias and, and racism and sexism in the workplace too. And so I want to make sure, folks, that um, you're aware of these things. Um, and so sometimes for some people, it doesn't feel like a safe space. That being said, for our communities, we're kind of used to navigating these spaces that weren't exactly built for us but we've learned how to leverage them. We've learned how to empower ourselves. And oftentimes we learn how to use these tools even better than they were originally built. So um, I say that to, you know, just make sure you listen to yourself, make sure that this tool feels right for you um, and really see it as a tool to empower yourself and your search um, so that it feels right for you. All right, so all of that said, let's go ahead and get started. All right, topic one. So like I said, um, if you were there for the first workshop, we went like deep into how, um, how you can really make your profile pop. Um, so think of this as like an add-on to, to that. And I'm happy to um, share the tips and tricks worksheet that I had shared from last time as well. Um, but I still wanna make sure that we cover a little bit about your profile because that can make a big difference. And the main thing I wanna cover about that is that keywords are key when it comes to that. So what do I mean by that? One sec, I'm just gonna check this real quick. All right, so keywords are key. What do I mean by that? Well, they're important because of LinkedIn's recruiter tool. So you'll see there um, if you're in recruiting, HR, talent acquisition, you might be familiar with the recruiter tool. Um, but that might not be the case for, for everyone. Um, so given that, 
I want to tell you a little bit about like how how that works. So most of us probably know it from the user experience side um, where, you know, you go on, um, it's a professional social media network, but it's also a place for you to um, look for jobs, find jobs to apply for, et cetera. What you may not know is that on the other end of it um, is LinkedIn's recruiter tool, which is actually a very powerful tool um, that recruiters are able to use so that they can find talent to fill the roles um, that they're um, required to, to fill for their, for their companies. And so what I'm looking to do today is to show you how to, um, in this case, leverage those keywords so that we can make sure that you're not just um, going out there and, and finding jobs and doing your part of the work, but that you're making it easier for the recruiters to find you too because you have the right keywords, they're in the right places as well. And it makes it much easier for them to come and find you for that job that you want. And they will also be able to fill um, that job as well. So it's about finding, finding that sweet spot um, using keywords. All right, so these are just like a smattering of examples of some keywords depending on um, the, the industry that you're in, the kind of job that you're looking for. So you can see there's a lot of different ones for marketing communications, software engineering, project management. These were just a couple of the ones that um, based on the um, industries and places that I've worked in um, that I just kind of tapped into. So if you work in marketing and communications, you know that spans a great deal. I know for me, it spans a great deal. So I wanna make sure that folks know by looking at my profile that I have these skill sets, that I have this experience, um, because when the recruiter goes back on their end, they're gonna type in, if they're looking for a social media manager, I better have social media on my profile. I better have you know, SEO or whatever experience I might have. So you wanna make sure that you have that right, um, those right keywords in there so that it makes it a lot easier for recruiters and hiring managers to come and find you. So um, where do you find these kind of keywords and everything? Might not be sure. I say one of the easiest ways is to kind of go through some job descriptions um, and see you know, what kind of keywords are they using in there. Um, at the same time, also make sure that the keywords and the experience that you have in your resume is also reflected on your LinkedIn profile too, uh, because that's also gonna make it easier for recruiters to come and find you, all right? Okay, now you have these keywords, where do you put the keywords? So you wanna have them in three key spaces on your profile um, because when the recruiter is going through their tool and they type in stuff, the more that they can find those words on your profile in those strategic places, um, the more that you'll come up as a um, better candidate for whatever role they're looking for. So of course, you know, if you're on your job search and you wanna make sure folks know about your communications experience, put it in your headline. So it's one of the first things that people see. Put it in your summary, in your about section. Tell a story using those keywords so folks know about the experience, about the story, about where you've been, where you're going, where you're planning on going in your career. And having those keywords in there will definitely help set you apart. And then finally, of course, you wanna have those keywords in your experience. So just like in your resume, you have those different descriptions and you have those words, um, not just describing what you've done and what your experience is, but the results that you also yielded, make sure that's also reflected on your LinkedIn profile as well. And in the different um, experiences that you have, so you can give very specific examples of how you, know, you have that social media experience or you have that digital marketing experience in each of those different um, job roles that you filled before. All right. Next, pro tip. So I know it can be tough to ask folks to, to get recommendations, but having recommendations, having whether it's an old manager or a coworker, maybe even a current manager, having them vouch for your work, having them vouch for those keywords that's gonna definitely make a difference too um, for the recruiter that is looking for somebody to fill that role. So 
you know, you can say you have this experience even better if you can have somebody else that's trusted, that has seen you um, doing this work even better to have them also vouch and validate that experience there um, by asking them for a recommendation. And then that'll show up in your profile as well. Um, and so then folks can like scroll down and see um, the recommendations that have been given about your experience. And then one more pro tip, this one I'm pretty excited about, and I'm still kind of learning more about it too, um, but it's actually a pretty new tool called LinkedIn's uh, Resume Builder. So it's a new tool. And from the way that I've been seeing it, it's not just great for your resume, but it's also really great for your profile too. So what this tool basically does is that you can upload your resume. And then as you can see along the side here, it gives you some insights about your resume. So say for me, I put in, okay, my desired job title was communication specialist. Does my resume reflect um, the kind of things that somebody who's looking for a communication specialist wants to see? So it looks like check, 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 check. Awesome, all of those things were found in my resume. Um, and then it also suggests some keywords. So these are things that I, perhaps I want to add to my resume. So just how it's giving you suggestions for your resume, think about how you can leverage and use those keywords in your profile as well to give you a little bit of help if you're feeling kind of stuck on what keywords to use. Um, so like I said, it looks like it's a pretty new tool. I definitely say go for it and like experiment with it um, and see how it can help your, um, how it can help your experience on LinkedIn as well. So, and all right, okay. Say you did my first workshop, say you're going through all of this, how do I know when I've done enough for my profile? One of the nice things that LinkedIn will do is that it'll kind of give you like a badge and it'll also have kind of like a thermometer too of like when you're like so close and it'll give you um, suggestions on what else you can do to improve your profile. Once you hit that all-star status, you are in that sweet spot your, your, all of your experiences on there. You've got some recommendations. Um, you've, you've made your profile like really stand out. So now you're good to go. Of course, still updated from time to time, especially as your, um, your career develops and grows. Um, but once you hit that all-star status, that's a good indicator for you that you're like, okay, I'm in a good sweet spot that I can move on to the next part of my job search. All right. Okay. So like I said, I don't want it to be just me talking to you um, all day. So for this next, um, for this next activity or for this first activity, I'm going to ask you to write down 10, that's not 10, 10 keywords <laughs> that you are going to incorporate into your profile. Um, and so once you have those keywords, um, hold on to them because those are going to come in handy during the breakout session, but you're going to have one minute to write down as many as you can think of that you think are going to um, be good keywords to incorporate into your profile. All right, so let's see if my music works. All right, hopefully, okay, you've got one minute. Once the music ends, we'll move on. All right, one minute is up. I hope everybody got some keywords down. If you didn't get to 10 keywords, that's totally fine. We will have plenty of time um, to do more of that later on. All right, okay. 
how are people feeling? Let's do a quick temperature check in the chat. How do people feel about doing the keywords? Feel good? Did you have trouble coming up with keywords? How about we have folks put in like at least one keyword that they got up that they're like, you know what? I definitely need to put this keyword in my LinkedIn profile. Ooh, what are good examples of keywords? Um, so here, I can go back real quick. I know I said I was gonna wait for eh, questions at the end, but let's go back real quick. So these are examples of keywords, Evelyn. So these are specific words that you would add to your LinkedIn profile that are about the um, your experience. So say, um, Oh, somebody put down administrative. Okay, so definitely, yeah, administrative, you can definitely go with that. Also think about some of the specific things that you've done in your administrative role. So maybe your, uh, maybe you're like really great at like the whole Microsoft Office suite. If that's something that you're really good at, definitely put that in there. Putting in some of the tools that you've worked on would be really, really helpful so folks know what tools you're familiar with. Okay, some folks kind of stumbled. Ooh, okay, people are trying to pivot. Okay, outreach, okay. I think for outreach, maybe talking, putting in some keywords about like what's some specific outreach that you've done. Are you talking about community outreach? Are we talking about media outreach? Being specific will also help with that. And that also goes for research as well. Are we talking about academic research? Are we talking about like market research? Being specific as well will definitely help. Oh, okay. And then some got stuck on one. Identity training. Okay. Okay, for some of the more specific ones, let's wait till we're gonna go to our breakout rooms and then we can really delve deep into those too. Because yeah, that one sounds interesting. I definitely wanna discuss that one more. All right, broke my rule once, I might break it again. All right, let's go. Thank you everyone for uh, those questions. We'll make sure we get back to them in our breakout sessions. All right, so we have optimized our profile. Um, we put in all those keywords, we've updated it. We have all the experience on there. We are ready to start that search. Um, and it's time to tell the world or at least your LinkedIn network that you're ready for work too. One of the easiest ways to do that is to let people know that you're actively looking through their open to work um, feature on LinkedIn. So it's probably changed a little bit since the last time I put this one together, um, but you'll probably notice um, a section right under your headline um, where it'll say like, oh, do you want to, um, say that you're open for work or say that you're hiring. You'll pick the one that says open to work. And then there you can set up um, your settings so that um, you can put in what specific job titles you're looking for. So for example, for me, when I was working um, on my job search, I put in um, you know, communication specialist, communications manager, but also um, I was actually at one point um, thinking about too, about how I want to pivot my career to and really do more of the DEI communications as well. And so that's why you see some diversity coordinator roles as well in there too, of, uh, for me to see if I could get, you know, my foot in the door as well. Um, but then you can also narrow it down by location. You can narrow it down by uh, remote work as well, and as well as distance. And especially nowadays, uh, companies are becoming much more flexible when it comes to remote work. Um, so that's, that's nice that you can like, you know, kind of take that box off. Um, you can also specify your start date. Are you in a job right now? And you're like, mm, you know, I'm flexible, I'm still kind of looking, not, you know, super in it now. Um, or are you like, you know, currently like your full-time job is job searching? Like, yes, I'm ready to start yesterday. You can specify that as well. You can also specify the kind of job. Are you looking for full-time work? Are you looking for part-time work? Um, maybe you're a consultant and you work on contracts, so you wanna find contract work. Um, 
So yeah, there's a lot of flexibility there and a lot of different ones that you can choose depending on what you're looking to do. Um, and then finally, and most importantly, is the last section of basically, who do you want to know that you are looking for work? And so what you can do is you can choose who sees that you're open. So you can set it as the first one, which says all LinkedIn members. Um, and that also includes not just the recruiters, but people um, where you currently work, if you are currently in a role. And then you'll see that it also adds a little photo frame to um, your photo as a badge that's letting folks know, hey, I'm open to work. Um, and so then that also helps um, you stand out so that folks can already see like, oh, this person, you know, they don't have to go through your profile already. They can already see like, hey, this person's ready, ready to work. Um, they're out here putting themselves out there. They're hustling to find work. Um, so that's a way to kind of open that up, that visibility. If you want to be more discreet about it, um, you can also do recruiters only so that the people who are using that LinkedIn recruiter tool that we talked about, they're the ones that would be able to um, notice right away that you are available to work. Um, and the reason that they do that is one, just for a more discreet experience, say you're in a job, but you don't want folks at your job to know that you're looking for work. This is a way to go about it. You'll see that it does have a little disclaimer that, you know, they try to take as many steps um, to make sure that your company doesn't know. Um, and so, you know, they'll say, of course, that they can't guarantee complete privacy. However, from my experience, it seems fine. Um, and so I definitely recommend if you want to feel like, you know, you want to be a little more discreet about it, maybe you're not sure, this is a good way to just kind of start to open that door for folks to approach you as well in your job search. And then finally, you save your preferences, you add it to your profile, and then so you make sure that you don't miss a, a job uh, opportunity that might come along, you set your notifications and you can set them for um, your email, you can set them up for job notifications or in-mail messages if a recruiter reaches out. So you can make sure that you are, you know, getting those messages right away and you're not missing um, that opportunity to communicate with somebody that can potentially be your next step into your next role. All right. Now, a little bit more into what the LinkedIn, your LinkedIn toolbox looks like. So you have your network, um, you let your network know that you're ready to work. You can have people come to you. So that's like the, the passive part of the job search. But now let's learn a little bit more about the tools that are available to you. So you can also take that active role in your job search as well using LinkedIn. So what does that look like? The one that we probably all know um, is the LinkedIn job search tool um, and allows you to, you know, not just search through thousands of jobs, um, but you can do it in a personalized way too. So much like where you could save um, in your open to work for what roles you're looking for, you can also set that up here as well. And so you can see just how extensive it is, not just with, you know, how you can type in the roles you're looking for, but It'll even give you information on where, based on your profile, you're a top applicant. So it might be worthwhile checking those out to see like, hey, is that actually a right fit for me? And then they also have recommended, um, recommended jobs as well. So that's the kind of the nice thing is that you're both getting the help of, you know, using the tool to search for, for roles, but then you're also getting um, roles coming to you that you can check out at your leisure as well too. So you could see, you know, I searched specifically for communications manager, but I'm like, okay, I don't want it that broad. I still want it to be in Oakland. So then it can narrow it down as well for me too. Um, and so then that's also helpful um, in your job search as well. So I'm gonna go through this again, cause I know that one went pretty fast, but you know, you can search for your job. You can include, you can see some of the previous job searches that I've had, so that's nice or you're a top applicant and it'll give a percentage. And then there's also the ones that are recommended to you. You'll see some are promoted. Um, so that means that some companies are paying for their jobs to show up. Um, but then if you keep digging, you'll find other ones that show up as well. 
And then the nice thing too is when you're searching, you'll see all of your other searches. And then it, again, at the bottom, it'll offer you some um, different titles and job titles to look for as well. Um, in case you're feeling stuck about like, okay, am I just looking for a communications manager role? Maybe, maybe it's time to, to, you know, go up a level and look for a communications director role, or maybe I want to be more independent. So maybe I should look at communications consultant role. So that's the nice thing is that you can both do your independent search, but then you can also get some feedback and um, more customized and personalized um, suggestions from the LinkedIn search tool as well. All right. All right, so now you set up your setting for, for a job, you can create an alert for it so that you don't, again, miss any that might come along. And so the earlier that you apply, and this is why it's such, um, it's, it's such a, a good like strategy to have these alerts set up is that the sooner that you apply, the better chance that you will have of your profile and your resume being seen. So um, you'll notice on some jobs that it'll say like, oh, they're actively recruiting or it'll tell you how long um, this job has actually been posted. The earlier you can get in, the better chance um, you'll have of being seen and screened earlier on. So that's one of the, um, the benefits of having these alerts is that you're able to kind of, you know, get yourself to the front of the line so you can be seen. Cause sometimes just being seen is the hardest step to get to. So we wanna make sure that we um, really reduce the amount of barriers for that. Now, say you found a job, um, but like, okay, I have to go to the grocery store and you know, I also have a part-time job and I also have to, you know, uh, get a babysitter. There's a lot of stuff going on. It's life, you know? So you don't have time to start that application yet. No problem, you can save it for later. So you can see here, these are some of the saved jobs that I had before. I can go back, I can see how long they've been posted. I can see, you know, if they're actively recruiting. Um, and so it's a nice place to kind of have them all together. Um, and so you can always go back to them. And then you can also go to your applied section to see and keep track of the ones that you already applied for. So that's really nice. So you can just kind of see, you know, the progress that you've been, that you've made, and then you don't feel like you're having to restart your search every single time. All of the jobs that you were like really interested in, that you're, that you're like, okay, I'm definitely going to apply to that this weekend. Let me just bookmark it essentially. And then I'll make sure I get back to it. Um, when I have the time to devote to that application, so. All right. Okay, you may have noticed on some of the job posts that there is an easy apply option. Again, I'm all about trying to reduce the number of barriers, making it as easy as possible. The easy apply is an easy way the one caution I get, I give is that you want to make sure that you upload all of your different versions of the resume um, that you have available for um, the jobs that you're applying for. Because the way the easy apply tool works is that you press easy apply. It works through LinkedIn rather than taking you to a different applicant tracking system. Um, and so then what you do is you can choose the resume that you already have on file. You can put in your name, a couple other details and then you press apply and it's done. You didn't even have to go to another website. You didn't have to create an account somewhere else. You can do it all through in a streamlined way through LinkedIn. So I definitely advocate for that. The one thing I say is definitely make sure you have all your different versions of your resume because you wanna make sure that the resume you're sending along is the right one for that particular job. So. And then one of the ways, so I don't know how folks feel about, you know, you know, when people, and I'll talk a little bit about this later too, but like the whole profile viewed by, you know, some folks kind of get like, I don't know if I want somebody to know that I looked at their profile. I don't want people looking at my profile. Totally get it. Um, the nice thing is with LinkedIn, it's kind of become, you know, 
just the thing to do now. It's kind of customary where it's like, oh, you know, it's almost not a surprise that people are looking at your profile, that you're looking at other people's profiles. Um, but that's an opportunity that you can really take advantage of. So one way is with this apply now, get, I call it get notice now. So what you can do is that you can set up your settings so that when you click apply, it'll auto share your profile with the person that posted the job, which is awesome in my opinion, because then now again, you're taking down a barrier and kind of moving yourself up. So, you know, it'll put you in front of the recruiter that is using the tool. Um, it'll get sent to them and then you'll have a much likelier chance of them going to your profile, which you've already put all your updated experience, you got your keywords and everything so that they will just not be able to resist looking through your profile and having to reach out to you for your resume too. So it's an easy way to get in front of the recruiter or the hiring manager, even before you applied. You don't even have to have applied yet. You can just click that, it'll open up another window. You can save it for later to start your application, but you can already get in front of the person that posted it by clicking that button and making sure that your settings are set that way. So I definitely like doing that. Um, sometimes I hadn't applied yet, but just kind of getting my profile um, in the, the recruiter's you know, box um, is, can, can be a, a good way for them to even reach out to you before you even have to apply yet. So, all right, pro tips. So like I mentioned earlier, profile viewed by, it is your friend. Um, I definitely recommend leveraging this feature um, so that you can look at the profiles, again, of the job poster, the recruiter, um, at the companies that you're interested in. So people will see like, oh, you know, so-and-so looked at me. Why did they look at me? Oh, it looks like they're open to work. Oh, I actually have, you know, a job rec that I need to fill. Let me go to their profile and see if they fit the bill. So that way, recruiters get alerted, um, they'll come and more likely look at your profile, and then they'll, they'll be more inclined to want to, to check it out and ask more information about you. So that's why I always recommend going back to your profile and making sure that it is on point at all times, checking it, you know, maybe like once a quarter to see if you should update it with anything, um, because you never know who's going to stumble upon it. And especially if you use the profile viewed feature in a strategic way, you can get more people coming to your profile to take notice. So that's the first part. And then the second part, following the company page of the companies that you're interested in working at, um, that you know, perhaps you've been following for a while and you would love to work there, um, or maybe you found a job and, they're, um, and maybe you don't know the company, but you wanna follow the company so you can learn more about it. Um, you can engage with their posts, but the reason I advise this is because, again, all of this information gets fed back through the recruiter tool so that the recruiter will notice that like, oh, this person, excuse me, not only just applied to this position, but they really seem to be, you know, interested in our company because they follow it. They've been following it for a while. They engage with our posts. They might be a good fit as well um, for this role. So. Um, you want to show, you know, that the genuine interest in the company as well, because that that good com karma for your job search um, will will come through at that end um, through the recruiter tool. Because again, it's just tracking all of the data. So the more that you can make yourself stand out because of your engagement with the brand and engagement with the job and everything, the better chance you'll be able to again um, make it through the screen. All right. So now we're on to our second activity. So what I'm gonna ask you for, to do the, for this one is I would like you to write down up to three job titles that you're going to, after this, you're gonna set up alerts for so you can start getting all of those notifications for the jobs to apply for and three companies that perhaps you'd love to work for that you're gonna follow. So three job titles that you're gonna set up alerts for and then three companies that you're gonna start following, all right? Let's go ahead and one minute starts now.
All right. Okay, how did how do people feel about the second activity? Hopefully a little more, probably a little bit easier. You know, you know what job title you're looking for. Better. Okay, good, good. Glad to see that. Hopefully, folks, you know, think of some companies. Definitely, okay, definitely easier. Good. All right. And again, we're gonna have the breakout sessions. So if you'll you know, again, going back to the keywords or even with the job titles too, um, the breakout sessions will be an opportunity to kind of knowledge share and help one another out as well um, so that we can come away with some good stuff by the end. All right, we are on to topic three, our last one. Okay, uh, we've optimized your profile with, with keywords. We've started our job search. We know how to use all those tools. Okay, how else can we boost our job search? You've probably heard the same before and I know it gets said a lot, but um, there's a lot of truth to it. So your network equals your net worth. So basically, if you haven't heard it before, it means that there is, you know, when we talk about your network um, or your net worth, it's often correlated, you know, with with money and um, with you know wealth, essentially. But there's also something to be said about the wealth that comes from your network or the community that you're a part of, the community that you exchange ideas with, and the network and connections that you have and can make through that network. Because often, you know, it's through word of mouth, it's through people vouching for you that will sometimes and oftentimes lead to your next role. So again, a lot of truth to it. Um, and LinkedIn is just so, you know, ubiquitous nowadays that it's basically become, you know, not just a tool for searching uh, for jobs, not just a tool for, you know, a professional social media platform, but it's also a great tool for networking and finding your professional community as well. And even more so now with, uh, folks having to work remotely too. So how do we leverage the networking aspects of LinkedIn? First things first, add, add me on LinkedIn, add, you know, adding each other on LinkedIn. That's one of the things that like, once you finish up a conversation with somebody at a networking event or a mixer or something like that, you always want to like, if you really vibed with this person, you feel like you could work together, come up with cool ideas, adding each other on your network, on your LinkedIn um, is key. So grow, grow your network with the folks that are going to help cultivate it, um, not just your growth, but you can also help their growth as well. So whether it's at work with your coworkers, at events, seminars, though that's a lot harder now, um, but there's definitely still a lot of opportunities through digital, um, digital uh, platforms like today. Um, maybe you're in school, connecting with folks through school, your professors, um, your your um, classmates, all that, other social media as well. So maybe there's folks from those networks that you also want to bring into your professional network as well. Um, and then, yeah, start connecting those and start building those professional relationships as well. So in the before times, you would be able to use QR codes, you know, on your phone. And this thing can still be pretty handy. But you can just as easily, you know, search people, have people search you. But that being said, you have to make sure that your profile is visible. Otherwise, folks won't be able to find you. So we need to make sure folks can find you. And you can do that by going into your settings. So I recommend going into that, into your settings and checking what your current visibility is. And you'll find that there are a lot of different settings um, of how your public profile and your private profile can show up. So depending on your comfort level, I, um, and especially when you're in your job search, I actually recommend um, setting your visibility to the broadest settings. Um, so you have maximum visibility. So as you can see, this is showing you what your public profile looks like. So I have that switched on. You scroll down, you can see what folks, if they just did a Google search on you, this is what would come up. You can toggle on and off stuff. So for example, for like my public profile, you know, do I want all of the details? Oh, maybe I can put all of the details. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna turn off the details. If people wanna connect with me, that's when they can learn more about the details with me. Um, so as you can see, um, you know, 
you can really customize it. You can set it so that it's just folks in your network that can see you or all LinkedIn members, or you can make it you know, super broad and make it public so that anyone who searches um, can also find you as well. Um, but again, I really think it depends on your comfort level on what feels right for you, what feels safe for you. Um, and note that, you know, when somebody becomes a first degree uh, connection with you, um, then they will be able to see all of the, the content on your profile, depending on how you set that up as well. So again, take some time to figure out, you know, what do you want the visibility of your profile to be? Um, because that might also um, make it easier or harder for folks to find you for certain roles as well. So something to keep in mind, play around with it. Um, and see what feels right for you. And then the other thing, and finally, so say you find a job or a company that you're super interested in. You're like, ah, oh, like, you know, this is, it's my dream job and my dream company. Um, how, how do I get my foot in the door? You know, I can submit my resume, submit my application. Is there anything else that I can do to help set me apart? One thing you can do is check to see if someone in your network can make that introduction, whether it's to a recruiter, whether it's to a hiring manager. Um, that's the nice thing about LinkedIn is that you can see the different connections um, based on your network and how you're connected to other folks that perhaps aren't in your network yet. So uh, say, you know, you want to look for somebody at a company, you know, hey, I want to work at Facebook for example, uh, does anybody I know that's in my network work at Facebook? And maybe one of them works in recruiting. With this tool, you can you know, go through your connections, you can put it in by current company, maybe you just wanna go by region, maybe you're gonna like, you know, move across the country, you need to see if somebody is in your network that perhaps can help you out once you move to a new place. So there's a lot of different things that you can uh, leverage with your network and you can filter through to find folks that can perhaps make those warm introductions, which will often yield better results for your professional career. Um, so it's become, again, pretty like standard practice nowadays when it comes to referrals and warm intros because they will yield better results and because people can also vouch for you. But it also shows that you're taking the initiative um, to you know reach out to folks because you really want this. So you're showing your hustle um, by doing that outreach yourself. Um, and so folks will really respond to that too. And especially nowadays, I feel like with the pandemic um, and just everything that 2020 has been, um, aside from a lot of the ugliness we have seen, I have also seen a lot of the goodness and especially a lot of people being a lot more uh, giving and willing to help each other out. So definitely don't be afraid of reaching out to folks and seeing if they can help you in your journey um, to find your next role. All right, last pro tip, LinkedIn Premium. So if you haven't tried LinkedIn Premium before, I'm pretty sure they still have their free 30-day trial. So I recommend taking advantage of that there's a lot of goodies that come with it. Some of them I'll go into. Um, one thing to note, I'm all about using free trials and not having to pay anything, um, but you have to be strategic with it. So make sure that you sign up for that free trial, the 30 day free trial, which is gonna start as soon as you sign up, make sure you sign up for it after you've done up all the updates, after you optimize your profile, you've put in your keywords, you've set up your search alerts, all of those things that you can do with the free version, set all of that up first and then turn on the 30 day free trial so you can take advantage of all the new tools for a fresh 30 days and you're not wasting any time doing some of the other things. So do all of those first, then sign up and you'll be able to get access to a bunch of different resources and other tools as well. So there's in-mail credits. So in-mail is their DM version. And basically you can use um, in-mail credits to send messages to perhaps recruiters that you know, aren't in your network yet. And so that'll give you some access. Applicant insights are really cool because you know, not only does it tell you like, oh, you know, you're in the top 10% of you know, potential applicants for this, 
but then you can also see some information on the keywords that are being used or how many people have applied already. Um, so that gives you a lot more insight too of you know, how, um, how you fare in, in applying for them. There's private browsing, you have more access to people who have viewed you and your profile. Um, and then one of the highlights I say is that you get access to a huge library of online, online courses. So you can also take the opportunity to skill up with, you know, whether it's, you know, you need to skill up in marketing or you need to skill up in more of those core business skills like project management or um, public speaking or even interviewing. All of those things are on there. So definitely take advantage of that as well using the free trial. And then make sure that you put it in your calendar when you need to cancel it as well. And then hopefully you'll have connected with a lot of different folks leveraging those 30 days. Um, and then it can make a big difference moving forward. All right, we've made it to our last activity. So for this last one, a little bit easier, I hope, um, because it's all about your network. So I'm gonna ask you to write down three people, at least three people, if there's even more that you wanna make sure you connect with, um, write down their names as well. Um, and yeah, now you'll have your list of folks that you're going to connect with on LinkedIn. Um, and if you feel like you can't think of three people, don't worry, we're about to go into breakout sessions. So you'll be able to find folks there too, all right? But in the meantime, try to think top three folks that you're gonna make sure you add to your LinkedIn network today. All right, and go. All right, we are done. Yay, congrats, and thank you for sticking with me through this. I know I threw a lot at you, and I know I threw a lot at you fast. Um, so thank you so much for sticking with it. Now's the time to knowledge share. Anything you feel like you might have missed, you can connect with one another on, and also learn from one another too. And like I mentioned earlier, you may gain a few more connections for your LinkedIn network as well. So now that we're done, let's go ahead. I'm gonna pass it along to Sarah and Paloma uh, for our breakout sessions, but I have the, if you wanna take a quick screenshot of what the activities were that we uh, did so that you can refer back to them during your breakout sessions. But with that, I'll hand it back off to our lovely hosts. Thanks, Ashley. So I think Paloma is working on getting the breakout rooms. Um, <clears throat> In the meantime, uh, yeah, we'll um, wait a couple moments until we are sent off. Awesome. And the timing all worked out. I just finished my coffee too. So it was, it was good timing. I was worried I was not going to be able to make it without. <laughs> and I'm sorry, Ashley, did you want to kind of revolve around, hop into different ones, or did you want to be assigned to specific? breakout room. How about um, if I can hop into them, that would be great. Awesome. I will work on that. Thank you. Ashley, 
I'm going to put you in one of them. And then when you want to come back out, I think you just exit and you'll pop back here. And then I'll okay. send you to another one. OK, cool. All right, let me know if you got that invite. Hi ladies, so I think we're doing the breakout rooms. Um, you should have seen, I think a pop-up saying, uh, extending that invite to those breakout rooms. If you wanna go ahead and click on that uh, to continue the discussion. I think everybody is back in. Um, so just wanted to, yeah, say thank you once again. Um, like I mentioned earlier, like if you feel like you didn't have folks to connect to, you have all of us now. Um, my information is up here. Um, you can, you know, check out um, my website if you also, you know, just want more, um, you know, examples of, you know, how to how to brand, how to message. Um, your, yourself, especially as you're on the job search, because that um, is always a, a big help um, in making sure that you have, you know, a, a cohesive brand, digital brand out there. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to email me. Um, and if you want to connect, especially on LinkedIn, um, there's my handle on that. So if you just type in my name or um, add the, it's Ash Rochelle at the end of that. Um, yeah, I'm happy to connect. I'm happy to help. And just want to end with um, some gratitude for having you all um, join join me today, and uh, for allowing me to teach you some of the stuff that I've learned throughout my career. 
Ashley, thank you so much. And do you have any time for questions? Yeah, I can take some right now if folks want to jump in. So, hi, <laughs> Ash. Um, okay. So, I'm actually starting my own, or I have started my own um, marketing business. And so, for me, I feel like it's a little different as far as the mm -hmm. job searching because when you when you do like own your own business, you're always looking for clients. Mm -hmm. um, or at least study clients. And I know you did show how you can always have the, um, like the consultant checkbox mm -hmm. on there if you are, um, if you do have your own company. But I was thinking like, even if I were to have that symbol that says open to work, it would consistently mm -hmm. be on there. And then I feel like that looks intense and a little crazy to be open mm -hmm. to work I see what you're time. saying. Um, it's yeah. like, yo, like, what's up with this girl? <laughs> she does <laughs> nonstop. Totally. Um, so I guess, I guess like from that kind of standpoint, not a corporate mm -hmm. standpoint, but like from owning your own business, like how do you think LinkedIn would be handled the best way? Yeah, for sure. So first of all, congrats on just, you know, having your own business. Um, so what I would recommend is like, yeah, you don't have to put like the, the open to work because yeah, the, and I mean, I guess I should say. Um, I would also recommend like, you know, checking out other folks that are, um, also consultants and just seeing what they do um, because it might it might differ. So I don't wanna speak for all. Um, however, for me, when I've been doing consulting, um, yeah, I didn't put up the open to work um, because um, yeah, for me, it just, it didn't, it didn't fit. And instead what I would do um, is I would leverage like my, my headline and putting it on there the like, hey, you know, um, like D DM me or like, you know, or even just putting the fact that like that you're in marketing communications and this like um, reach out to me for this like you can use that or you can also use the um, the real estate like on your banner as well and coming up and like putting like your logo and your call to action there as well um, I think another way to leverage LinkedIn is actually um, coming up with like your own marketing uh, strategy for your brand and using LinkedIn as another platform to basically market yourself to um, so that you kind of have like just some of that passive marketing. Um, but then what you can also do too is um, if uh, you do notice like you can, um, if you're interested in doing like contract work too. So there are companies that do hire for contract work. I would actually, when you search for companies um, set up ones that are contract, set, it, uh, set the filter so that it's contract. And then you can see all of those. And so then you can go about it two ways. You one can like, you know, apply for the role like as a contract, you know, or as a consultant and letting them know that like, you know, a friend, because they probably are looking for um, a consultant. Um, or what you can do too is um, uh, think about like DMing, um, the um the person um that posted it as well like hey you know i noticed you have this is this uh you have this open job uh rec you know it's a contract role like are you considering consultants because i'm here ready to work so that's a way where you can be a little bit more active um in your outreach as well for clients does that help i was about to say thank you so much yeah i wrote i wrote okay, it all cool. down <laughs> awesome cool cool Any other questions before we wrap up? And also I see folks are adding their LinkedIn um, to the chat. So definitely connect with each other and um, connect with us as well. Um, let me see if I, we have a LinkedIn page. So let me drop that link in the chat as well. Um, Cause we'll be, we post um, all of our events and uh, blog posts and things like that on our LinkedIn page. So, um, you know, definitely connect with us on social media. We'll be sending out, you know, as usual, more resources and things. So, uh, let's see. All right. And then um, before we end, I also just wanted to let you all know that 
Um, we'll be having another event on February 13th at 9.30 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, which is 12.30 Eastern Standard Time. And it's going to be all about resumes and cover letters. So um, if you're interested in that, definitely check that out. We'll be posting, um, I think starting Tuesday or Wednesday, we'll be posting the link to sign up. So, um, and if you're not, if you haven't signed up for a newsletter, definitely do that as well, because we'll be sending out uh, the RSVP information through there. Um, but yeah, so with that, um, thank you all so much for joining and, um, you know, good luck with the, with the job hunt. It's, it's a new year, new us. So, um, you know, really, really exciting step forward. Uh, and thank you, Ashley, so much for all of your amazing information and amazing PowerPoint. So, so it's so pretty to see. <laughs> thank you. Um, and the thank you to Paloma, who put this whole event together, and she always coordinates everything behind the scenes to make it so seamless. Um, but yeah, thank you all, and I hope you have a wonderful weekend. Everyone. Yes, thank, thank you, you ladies, everyone. for putting this together. Very much appreciated. Thank you for making it a safe for space. Sure. Thank, thank you. you. Absolutely. Thank Take you. Take care, y'all. Good luck. Bye.